Hey, all my party people, my fun people on the cruise ship, the people that I like to drink with, that I like to have fun with. The reason you're watching this video is because, well, you want to find out what it's like or how to host your own bar crawl. Now, you're talking to somebody or you're watching somebody, I should say, that has hosted dozens of bar crawls across almost the entire Carnival fleet. And I've been told so many times, and it's such a great compliment, that this was the best bar crawl they've ever been on, right? And people say, you know, well, we've been on other bar crawls and they weren't very organized, and, and but this one was so organized and it was so much fun. You know, what did you do? Well, I'm gonna tell you what I did and I'm gonna tell you just how you can run one just as successfully as I do. Give you the step-by-step -step instructions right after this. Cruise go! Yeah. I just can't get away from a good time. Coach Cruz, like, subscribe, share. You know what to do. Okay, so hosting a bar crawl. What is one of the big keys to success? Okay, first key, Facebook. You might be saying, what the heck does Facebook have to do with running a successful bar crawl. It has everything to do with it. Okay, so some of you may not know this. As a matter of fact, I would say two thirds or more of every cruise that you go on, people are oblivious to Facebook groups. Okay, maybe they don't belong to Facebook or maybe they just didn't know these groups existed. If you're one of those people, listen up. If you go to Facebook and you type in the name of your cruise ship, right? and you type in the date that you were sailing away, the date of embarkation, I can almost guarantee you, you are going to find your sailing and somebody's already created a cruise page for your specific cruise. All right, now it gets better. This is where the whole planning comes into effect. Now, the closer you get to your cruise date, that number of people that join that cruise page to get information, to share ideas, to ask questions, things like that, it keeps growing and growing and growing. I've been in several cruise pages that are over 1,000 people. Now you might say, okay, well, I'm going on a ship that carries like 5,000 people, 1,000 isn't that much, and you're right. That's why I say there's only like 20, 25% of the people even know about Facebook cruise pages, but like I say, those who do, are that much more in the know and they get some great ideas on what to do for their vacation and how to maximize it, including finding some events that aren't carnival specific or aren't Royal Caribbean specific or aren't Norwegian specific, Virgin, whatever your favorite cruise line is. They have events that they plan on their own outside of the cruise line. And a bar crawl is just one of those events. A slot pole, for example, might be another one of those events. There's a bunch of, um, you know, there's uh, what, what's the thing where people tour other cabins and things like a cabin crawl, check out the different cabins, a gift exchange. There's all these different kind of events that people host and, you know, they can be a lot of fun. So if you're of like minds, uh, you know, people that like to, to hide ducks and things like that, sometimes they'll have meetups and all that type of stuff. So what you'll do is at the top of the page, you're gonna find the events. Now click on that events button once you click on that events button, you're going to see some of these events that I told you about if the, the cruise page is a few months old, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to create your own event. If you look on there and there's no bar crawl, and there's a good chance there's not going to be one, you could say, okay, I'm going to make the party happen, right? I am going to do this. Now, here's a big suggestion for you. I suggest doing it on a sea day. I like to do my bar crawls at the very beginning of the cruise. You can't do it day of embarkation because you get on there, people are trying to unpack everything else like that. You have your sail away party. By the time the sail away party's done, it's pretty much time for dinner, right? And so you're gonna go to dinner and you know then you get into the evening's festivities. There's just not time. It's not a good time to do it on the day of embarkation. Now, the next sea day, often that is the day that I do it. I do it a different day if there's an additional sea day. Now, some of your longer cruises, some of your seven days, but a lot of your eight days might have a second full sea day at the front end of your cruise before you hit any ports. The reason I choose to do it on the second full sea day is usually on the second day of the cruise, that is your first formal night, 
okay? Now I start my bar crawls around one o'clock and they typically last about three hours and you know sometimes a little bit more depending upon how much fun we're having right at the after party and things like that um so once you get done with that is you might guess if you've had about seven drinks and you're partying and having fun you might be a little bit tipsy you might need a nap and get a shower clean up everything else like that so by the time you wake up from all that and it's time for dinner maybe you haven't sobered up 100% yet. And I have had a couple people complain to me about, yeah, you know, I w didn't take the, the, the most perfect pictures because of the bar crawl, but they're happy about it. You know, it's, it's, it's just kind of a joke after the fact. And I'm like, yeah, sorry. You know, so that's one of the reasons though that I pick, um, you know, that second C day if it's available. So that's what I suggest you do. But if it's not available, then you're just gonna have to go on the formal night. And like I said, let people, you know, Tell them at the end of the bar crawl, hey, you know, go back, get a nap, get a shower, get rested up so you can take those nice formal pictures if that's something that you choose to do. All right, so that's the suggestion. The other reason for doing it so early in the cruise, because some people say, why don't you do this later in the cruise? Well, I've done them later in the cruise, but it's usually a second bar crawl because people have had so much fun on the first one. The whole point of doing it at the beginning of the cruise is so you can have fun and you can meet people, right? You want to meet fun people that are fun to hang out with. If you see them at a bar, you have a drink with them, you talk, you have a good time together, right? And you want to keep hanging out with the, with people that you, you have fun with all throughout the cruise. At least a lot of people like to do that. So when you do that at the beginning, you meet a whole bunch of people and you have a whole lot of fun. And then throughout the cruise, you got a bunch of friends, right? To party and hang out with. So that's why you do it. Okay, so um, after you create the Facebook page, you give the date, you give the time, you name the bar where you're gonna be meeting up and all those things. Now, you just gotta get people signed up. Now, another reason that I like to have shirts included in my bar crawls, there's a couple of them. For one, if you're all dressed the same, you're all going as one big group, you're easy to identify, people see the party coming and uh, they turn their heads and you know they get jealous, right? And they're like, oh man, that looks so fun. I wish I could go on it. Now, I don't require people to purchase shirts. Now, this is one of the shirts that is used on the bar crawl. They come in all different colors. So for me, it's a Coach Cruise bar crawl, right? And people get these shirts in a variety of different colors. So we just look like the Caribbean, uh, Caribbean party walking around from bar to bar, screaming, yelling, having fun, laughing, all that, right? And, uh, you know, like I said, there's a big design on the back with with this dog logo and you know the the slogan just can't get away from a good time right and real big on the back and people like these shirts so I've, and people have ordered them um you know outside of bar crawls just because they like the design and it gives that caribbean feel and everything so it's like a cruise shirt right all right so when you create this event you're gonna have some people sign up initially it might just be a, a couple people, four or five, six people, and you're like, oh, wow, this didn't get the reaction I wanted to right out of the gates. That's fine. You know, the longer away you are from your cruise sailing, the, the less people that are going to be signed up. I mean, it's just natural. It's going to grow and grow and grow, just like the cruise page grows. When you sign up for your cruise page, there might only be a couple hundred people in it. But as you get closer to the, the cruise, you might have... 700, 800, over a thousand people signed up for your particular cruise on the Facebook page, that is. And as you get closer and people start deciding what they want to do, what events they want to be a part of, your numbers for your bar crawl are going to rise a lot. Okay. Um, I've been, for example, just a month away from a bar crawl and I've looked and past bar crawls and said, wow, you know, I only have like 25 people signed up for this bar crawl. This one might be a dud, you know? And then before I know it, a week out, there's like over 60 people signed up. And it turns out great, right? All right, now, you've created the Facebook page, you have your big group. Let's say, I used that number 60 earlier. All right, let's say you have 60 people signed up. There's still gonna be a no-show factor. If you have 40 people that bought a shirt, you can almost, you can count on, I would say, 37 of those people showing up. I mean, if they bought a shirt, they're part of it. You know, they, they put their money down on something. It's like, I'm going to be there. If you don't do shirts or do, do something that, you know, makes the people feel like almost obligated or locked into the event, there's a good chance they're not going to show up, right? 
So, I mean, when people put money on something, they're more likely to come. So, again, not only do they come away with the shirt, they're going to have a big fun party and everything else like that. It's going to make it more likely that you have a bigger group of people, which is in turn is going to be more fun. Okay, so you come in, and here's what you got to do. This is the nitty-gritty of it. Once you board the ship, you've come up the gangway, you've dropped off your suitcases in your room, you've gotten a drink or whatever, now it is time to head to guest services. And guest services might be a bit of a mess. It usually is at the beginning of the cruise. So if you get on there and you see that the line's not very long, get in that line right away uh, before it gets long. And when you get to the front of the line and you speak to guest services, you're going to ask them this. I would like to speak with the beverage manager. And they might say, why do you need to speak to the beverage manager? And you explain to them, well, I'm going to be hosting a bar crawl. And I want to go over with the beverage manager all the different bars that we'll be visiting and the different drinks that we're going to suggest for each stop. Okay. And I've never had them decline. I've gone there times and they've called the beverage manager and the beverage manager has been busy, but they've said, okay, you know, the beverage manager is either going to call you and you can come back down or the beverage manor manager will meet you at dinner or something like that. I've had, you know, beverage managers come up to me day of embarkation while I was seated for dinner and talk through the whole thing. And it didn't bother me a bit, right? What you want to do is you want to have a plan. Okay, what I like to do is I like to start at the bottom and work my way up, right? So for example, my next cruise um, is going to be on the Carnival Horizon, Thanksgiving. And like I said, I like to start a lot of times on a ship like that, not the mega ships, but you know, the Vista class ships in the atrium lobby. It's a nice big space. You can get a whole big bunch of people there together. Um, you know, they're gonna come in a little at a time, First two people, then you'll have four people, then you'll have 10 people, then you'll have 15 and 20 and 30 and 40. And all of a sudden you're gonna have this big group. Once you feel like you have most of your people there, everybody's had a drink, they're starting to mingle a little bit or whatever, then you get them every, all together and you explain the route that you're gonna take. You can talk about some of the suggested drinks and that type of thing. But I'm gonna back up because what I neglected to tell you is when you speak with the beverage manager, again, before we go to the people and you know talking to them, there's gonna be a couple things that you're gonna request. First, you want some senior bartenders. Depending upon the size of your bar crawl, you could ask for as many as three senior bartenders. And those senior bartenders will go with you. They'll actually travel with you from bar to bar and it helps tremendously. This, that's where the organization comes in because what'll happen is you go to a bar and you don't plan this out. You don't talk to the beverage manager or anything like that. And all of a sudden, 45, 50 people come walking in and there's two bartenders behind the bar. What's gonna happen? It's gonna be a train wreck. Now, if you have a suggested drink, okay, so let's say for example, the Havana bar on the Carnival Horizon. That's at the back of the ship. And let's say I said to the beverage manager, okay, um, the suggested drink we're going to do here is the Cuban iced tea. All right. So what happens is if you were in Guy's Pig and Anchor Bar, right, which is just down the hall, once everybody has gotten their drink there, they're starting to mingle, drink, finish their drinks, whatever. Your senior bartenders will come up to you and they'll say, hey, is the next is Havana the next bar we're going to? And you'll say, yeah. And you remind them again, you know, Cuban iced tea is what we're drinking. And boom, they, they take off. So they go ahead of us and they'll already start making these drinks. They make a big batch of drinks. They know that there's 40 or 45 people that are going to be getting a Cuban iced tea. And so they have all these Cuban iced teas already ready, right? And so when you get there, all the drinks are just, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. They're just all passed out and everybody is drinking and the party just keeps going, 
Okay, that's because it's organized, right? Hey everybody, thanks for watching the video to this point. Obviously you're finding it somewhat useful because you're still watching, right? So if you're not already a subscriber, if you could do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot. We're trying to hit 10,000 this year and we're getting closer every day. So one more gets us closer there. And if you're already a subscriber, hit that like button and that helps as well. That'll help get this video out to more people too. Thanks for watching, let's continue on. Now, what I tell some people is like, look, you don't have to order the suggested drink. If we're ordering a margarita and you can't stand tequila, for example, you don't have to get a margarita. But I do tell everybody, look, it's going to help the process, it's gonna help the, the bar crawl go smoothly and everybody's gonna get a drink fast and then we don't have to spend like an hour at each bar. I spend roughly 20 to 25 minutes at each bar because like I said, it's organized and people can drink their drinks. And like I say, once they get mingling and everything else like that, before they know it, their drink's gone after about 20, 25 minutes and it's time to move on to the next bar, right? So that's what you wanna do. Now, as far as drink suggestions go, I suggest picking a drink that is not too sweet, okay? Um, if you get too sweet of drinks, it's gonna turn a lot of people off. To be honest with you, I've never hosted a bar crawl where everybody liked every drink. Most of my bar crawls, most of the people like most of the drinks, but you know, there's always one where people are like, eh, you know, I could take or leave that one. But then there's a couple others where like, wow, this is really good. I'm gonna order more of these. What was this one called again, you know? And, and they really like it. So, um, you know, it's that, that, that old saying, you can please all the people some of the time and some of the people all the time, but you can never please all the people all the time. That's kind of the way it goes when you're, when you're picking drinks. But most people are good sports about it. Like I say, they know it's only one drink if there's something they don't like. And they're like, hey, it's alcohol. I don't care. I want to get a buzz and they'll drink it anyway, right? All right. So some other things that you can do. You're in the middle of your bar crawl. Everybody's having fun. Now, honestly, you don't really have to do anything. But one thing that I've started to do and people have had a lot of fun with it is you can play some games in between. Now, one of the games I've started to play recently on a lot of my bar crawls is a drink that was actually suggested to me by a beverage manager. And I'm like, you know what? That sounds simple enough. I think we can do that. But it's called Suck My Beer, right? And it puts your bar crawlers in a provocative kind of situation, right? <laughs> because what you do is you get a whole beer and you get a pint glass and you fill that pint glass up and then everybody gets a straw, right? Now, I make it both ways, right? I have a female group and I have a male group. And I allow the females, if, if they think they, they can take down the men, if they want to compete against the men, they can, you know? But, uh, you know, the females are, are just against the females, right? And then I have some so sort of a prize. Sometimes, you know, I've, I've been nice enough to know some people within Carnival, and they've given me a couple ships on a stick, and I, you know, will give the ships on a stick as a prize or a medal or something like that. But you try to give away some kind of a prize, right? And so, you know, for example, you might have the ladies starting off first, and so... What their partners do, if it's their husband or, you know, if they have a girlfriend, whatever, is they put the beer, the full beer, in between their legs, right, with the straw. And um, then, you know, the person is down on their knees and they have to suck the beer out of the straw. So you can imagine how that looks. And here's a little video, of course, that is showing you just how that looks. But everybody just thinks it's a riot. And they, you know, it's just so much fun and everything and, and people really get into it. And like I said, it's just, it's just fun and everybody's laughing and having a good time. And it's, yeah, it is what it is. It's just, it's just fun and it's all volunteer, you know, so you, you're not going to force anybody to do this. You can say, Hey, you can choose to do this if you want. Uh, the more that participate, obviously, the more fun it is. And people get into it. They, they you know, they get mad. Like, they want to win, you know. <laughs> I mean, the prize isn't all that big. But, you know, there's been a couple times where, I don't want to say it's gotten heated, but, you know, there's there's been a little, you know, controversy going. Like, oh, no, they didn't finish their drink all the way and this and that. So, so you almost got to have judges, right, just, just so it doesn't get a, a little crazy. And yeah, so that's one of the things you could do. Another thing that I do, and this is if you want to decide to take money out of your own pocket, I choose to do this, um, but I get lays, 
you know, and you can get lays pretty cheap. You can get about 50 lays for like 12 or 13 bucks off Amazon or Timu. You know, it really doesn't cost you that much money. Um, you know, I have a YouTube channel. Obviously, you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook probably. And well, anyway, you know, I give away stickers from my YouTube channel. I give away buttons. I give away all that stuff. And obviously, I'm not getting this stuff for free. But, you know, I think it helps promote the channel. The lays don't really help, help, help promote the channel, but they make the uh, bar crawl a little bit more festive and a little bit more fun. And I always joke, my corny dad joke or whatever, I guess you could say is, you know, the first 50 people are guaranteed to get laid. And it never fails to get a laugh. So I'm going to keep using that line. So if you ever go on a bar crawl with me, expect to hear that line. And you may get a chuckle out of it too. I don't know. All right. So, um... That's pretty much it. I mean, I think I've given you all the, the bits and pieces that you need to know. Like I said, Facebook, get interest in your bar crawl, right? Um, I recommend t-shirts of some kind. Now, obviously, you're, this is the part where it, it gets a little bit challenging because you have to, to go on the hook and potentially purchase shirts. Now, what you could do is you could go with a theme, right? And you could just say, hey, everybody wear red and or you know guys wear blue and ladies wear red or something like that and you know you could just have people wear certain colors if you don't want to get a, you know an actual t-shirt whatever you choose to do make it your own you know i've made the bar crawl my own i've put my own twist to it like i said people have, have had nothing but good things to say about my bar crawls it's one of the things I'm known for. It's one of the reasons why my YouTube channel is as successful as it is. Some of you may have gone on that bar crawl and became a subscriber and started watching my videos. If it's not something you want to do, you would just like to participate in a bar crawl and you find out that nobody is hosting one on your particular cruise, share this video on your Facebook cruise page and just tell people like, hey, I don't want to be the host for this but this guy gives you the, the, the instructions on how to host a good bar crawl. I want to participate. I will be the first person to sign up for the bar crawl, but I just don't want to be responsible for it. You can do that too. Just share this video on your uh, Facebook cruise page and ask somebody to, to be the hero, right? All right, that's all I got for you. Another video, hit that like button. We'll talk to y'all later. Happy cruising. Oh, YouTubers, check me. This is Cookie, your cruise director on the Carnival Horizon down in Miami, Florida. Trust me, number one, you want to follow this man's channel, Coach Cruise, because he's the absolute best coach out here. Not about fitness, but about cruising. Trust <laughs> me, he's going to make sure you have the best time ever because he knows the ins and outs of every cruise that you go on. So click that like, follow button, and share more about this brother right here. Not only is he my coach, but he's my cousin. We'll see you all <laughs> on the next cruise. Until then, we're out of here. All Peace. Right. I just can't get away from a good time